what I title the day of visitation. Luke chapter 19, please. And we'll begin our reading from verse 42 down to 44. Luke chapter 19. Jesus wept in the Bible and the Bible tells us that there are two reasons why Jesus wept, biblically speaking. Reason number one was when in John chapter 11 and verse 35, he stood before the tomb of Lazarus. The Bible says he wept and the people said, oh, how he loved him. The second reason why Jesus would weep was recorded now in Luke 19. The Bible says that he stood over Jerusalem and he began to weep. And he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belonged unto your peace. He says, but now they are hid from your eyes. We're reading to 44. He says, for the days shall come upon thee that thy enemies shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee round and keep thee in on every side. 44 it says and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and they shall not leave thee in one stone upon another reason because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation hallelujah god is a god of times and seasons in his operation his dealings with men God works with men based on times and seasons. In fact, he so designed human activities upon the earth to work in honor to the law of times and seasons. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1, you read the full text in the first 11 verses, but for the sake of time, I will only read verse 1 and then we'll jump to verse 11. It says to everything, someone says everything, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose provided it is under heaven. If it is above heaven, we may not be able to say much, but once it is under heaven, the Bible says that for everything upon the earth, there is a season. Verse 11 now says he had made all things beautiful. He had made everything beautiful, provided that thing can understand its alignment to seasons. That the beauty of anything is connected to its understanding its season god is a god of times and seasons human activities happen within the frame of times and seasons if a woman takes in for instance it's a futile prayer to begin to pray when she's three weeks pregnant oh god give me speed no, that is not a wise prayer. It's not a scriptural prayer and it's not even an intelligent prayer. What she prays is for grace to go through the full season. There are times when the baby will want to come out at the fourth month. Nobody celebrates it even though it looks like delivery. What is wrong is not the process. What is wrong is that it is violating seasons. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. When you give birth to a child, imagine a child that just came out from its mother's womb and then jumps and begins to speak. You don't call that child a normal child. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says Jesus increased. Other versions will say Jesus grew. The word incarnate. But when he came to the earth, he subscribed to the law of times and seasons. He grew in wisdom. He grew in stature. He grew in favor with God and with men. Someone say times. Say seasons. One more time. Say times. Say seasons. If you get up by 12 midnight or you get up by 11 p.m. Nigerian time and tell someone good afternoon, 
the person will recommend you to see a doctor. Is that true? Afternoon is a season, but that timing should not be called afternoon. I'm saying this because most believers do not know the role of discerning seasons as far as their manifestation is concerned. All things are not possible every time. All things are only possible. The beauty of anything is when you discern the season it is connected to. If a young boy of eight comes to you and says, I want to marry, you are going to tell the boy something is wrong with you. Not because marriage is bad, but he's doing something to seasons. If he comes at age nine and says, give me the car keys, you will reject the offer, not because you hate the child. You're giving him gifts, also subscribes to seasons. Are we together now? Most believers understand desires. They understand the fatherhood of God, but they do not understand seasons. So the kinds of prayer we pray and the way we approach the Christian experience is a revelation largely of our ignorance in knowing that God operates with men through times and seasons. Is someone blessed already? Before God created man, as we know in Genesis chapter 1, he put in place seasons. The Bible says he made many lights. He made the stars to signify times and seasons. Then he made two great lights. The greater to rule the day, the lesser to rule the night. When seasons were in place, he now said, let us make man. So man came seeing seasons already in motion. If you do not discern seasons... Then you can be robbed of an opportunity. Listen, if I have an appointment with you, if I say, see me tomorrow, the next question you will ask is, what time? You can't see me every time. Just because I said tomorrow is your day does not mean every part of tomorrow. You have to meticulously know the season. If I say, see me tomorrow, and you knock on my door by 11 p.m., it is still tomorrow. But you did not go far enough to know the season. Maybe the opportunity I had for you was for 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. You can be, listen, you can be in the right atmosphere, but the wrong season. Standing before a tree when it is not time for figs or time for Jesus caused a tree. Not because it was not a tree. There was an expectation based on a season. And the tree did not deliver. It took advantage of the season. That means according to God's design, that tree should not just have leaves, it should have figs. If God can cause a tree because it aborted seasons, we need to find out what has been happening to us because of the absence of discernment. Is someone learning already? There are some of us Based on the prophetic calendar and the season of your life, you should not be at this level of grace. There are some of us, you are in a season of your life where there is unusual favor. But because you do not have the eyes to see it, you are not maximizing the season. In Genesis chapter 28, when you read about the encounter of Jacob at Luz, hallelujah, a place he would later name Bethel, the Bible says he put a stone there to sleep. And then he saw a ladder ascending to reaching the heavens. And there were angels ascending and descending. And when all that encounter happened, the Bible says he woke up and he said, The Lord was in this place and I knew not. He said, Surely this is the gates of heaven. This is the house of God. He did not maximize the blessings that that season would bring. The next thing that will happen in the life of Jacob was a 20-year tragedy. By the time we get to Genesis 32, God tries him again. This time around, he dismissed everything and was ready. As soon as a man came, he held him. He said, I missed it the first time. He said, leave me for the day break. I know it is my season. I will not let you go until there is an information I know about this season. That when God visits men, he does not come anyhow. Now that you have come, 
I will not waste my season. Leave me for the day breaketh. He said, what is your name? He would have remained Jacob forever. But discerning seasons change him to Israel. He said, Jacob, he says, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, thou hast had power with God and you have prevailed. He touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him. The Bible says he named the place Peniel and the sun arose. The sun arose meant seasons had changed. It was night when he had that encounter. And there is a relationship between weeping and night. The Bible says the sun arose. That means weeping ends. Because you see, in the realm of the spirit, you do not call day based on biological or geographic timing. The Bible says he called the, the darkness night and he called the light day. Your day is not when the clock moves. Your day is when light comes. So you can be 12 in the afternoon and still be in darkness because the requisite level of light that turns your nights to day is not there. Please sit down. So God is a God of times and seasons. The dimension of God's grace and beauty that was supposed to release in his creation is connected to seasons if you do not understand your season listen if you learn how to play football professionally at 60 your skill is there but you learn too late because the season of football and the flourishing season does not allow that you you can go to the field as a, a as a hobby but not professionally speaking. Are we together? Hmm. Seasons. Seasons have the power to veto your skill. Seasons have the power to veto your sincerity of heart. You can be the most sincere person. But if you miss seasons, that is it. It will take the mercy of God. Why did God send me here? Because I believe there are people who have missed seasons already. There are certain things when you were supposed to be born again, you did not even know. And based on the, the blueprint of your life, he said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. Imagine if Jesus discovered purpose at age 31, not knowing it was only 33 years. He discovered purpose at age 12 and he had 18 years to prepare for a ministry of three and a half years. Someone says seasons. Do you know one of the assignments of the power of God is to be able to circumvent through the, the negative things that have been programmed as a result of missing seasons. That's why we have things like speed and we have things like restoration. These are prophetic systems of advantage to help the believer still gain time. When you have missed a season, God can give you speed. Speed means that he is able to make you move past the current time. And restoration means because he does not dwell in time, he can reach back to take the events that would have happened and shift it forward for you. So the Bible says, and I will restore the years. He can restore years. Only God can do that. But it is important. Please listen carefully. Make sure you are paying attention. There are some of you based on the prophetic blueprint in your life. You have one more year for your manifestation. Yet it is that same year that you are getting born again. It takes time to know God. It takes time to prepare. There are some of you who are kingdom billionaires in the making and by prophecy. But because you did not discern purpose nor seasons. All times are not convenient for all things. When you buy a product, there's something they write on the product best before. That means if you want to get the most of this product, consume it within this time range. You can buy a product of whatever amount and leave it to expire. What does it mean for a product to expire? The container does not have to spoil. But there is no guarantee that you can maximize the value there again. Hey. 
someone please hear me the lord created and allowed for this jubilee conference to address something in your life because you will know that there is a spirit called a waster do you know the assignment of a waster <laughs> The assignment of a waster is to either occupy or distract you so that time will go without a justification of the events that should happen there. When he rebukes and restores years, he talks about the locust, the palmer worm, the canker worm. These are not just insects. These, these, these are spirit entities that have the ability to waste people's lives. There was a man called the madman in Gadara. His correct name was the evangelist over Gadara. That was the man mandated to save a Decapolis. And yet he was bound and kept. The Bible does not tell us who kept him in the tomb. But he would injure himself and remain there. Only God knows how long. Jesus went to Gadara to save one man and return back. Because in that one man was the destiny of many. I don't know who I'm speaking to tonight. But someone God brought you here. Because it's time for your family to rise. For God's sake God brought you here. Because it's time to keep saying happy new year. And merry Christmas with nothing changing. You know that something is wrong. If the only thing growing in your life is your age. If the only thing growing is your age. And nothing else is growing to justify it. someone say with me in the name of Jesus shout it again say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I decree and declare, decree and declare that, the that the waster has no power, has no power over, the over the seasons of my life open your mouth and begin to pray in, in one minute in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the waster has no power over the seasons of my life, I come against the waster. Anything that I've been assigned to waste me, I declare to them that be commanded. You have no power. Shake it back at those can let a boss. Is someone praying? You have no power over my season. You have no power over my season. I declare today that the power of the waster is broken. And I break the power of the waster. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. First Chronicles chapter 12. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. My God, I sense the power of God in this place. First Chronicles 12, 32. Hmm. Kalish Shali Katosia. Kende Shale Sobrahaskema Shabakatosh. Embraka Kapatos Kaliga Barasiketea. Shali Skabrendege Barusiata. I'm praying for four people. I want you to bring them out right now. The power of God is resting upon them. This altar that has sat upon your family. Sat upon your family. I don't know where you are under the sound of my voice. But I stretch my hand. Standing upon the grace upon this altar. And I decree and declare right now. Right where you are. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Please bring them out. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Let the power of God rest upon you right now. Bring them before the altar here. The door that has stopped your season. We have come by a rod of a higher priesthood to scatter that door and release you into your jubilee in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please don't be distracted. I want you to bring them out. I'm about to pray right now. The spirit of God is ministering to me. There are people here having the spirit of delay sitting upon your life. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon you right now i don't know where you are but in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus and that fire will rest upon you please whether you are an usher or not bring them out in the name of jesus are you ready now 
word of life are you ready one two three shout jesus help that man in the name of jesus i command the spirit of delay lose god's people right now lose god's people right now bring them out bring them out please delay be broken delay here at the jubilee conference No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't. Love you won't down. Please sit down if you can. We are soon going to be praying in this place. Except, listen to me. If God be God, I am saying it again. Anything that followed you here to mock the name of your God in the name of Jesus as we celebrate Jubilee. We declare that it's a season of exodus for you. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 12 and 32. Can you see it projected? Let's read it together in concert if you can. One, two, read. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The Bible says the heads of them were 200 and as a result, their brethren were at their command. There was a strange tribe of Issachar and the Bible says these men were not the most skillful. Mm -mm. Are we together? These men were not the most privileged. Mm -mm. The Bible does not record that. The distinguishing feature of this tribe is that for some reason, they place value on discerning times. And as a result, the Bible says they were, they had authority and they were ahead. Their brethren were at their command. Please pay attention. Knowing then that life operates based on the law of times and seasons. How do you then maximize the seasons of your life? Because every man according to the law of time and chance. The Bible says it happened to them all. That means every poor man. Based on the integrity of God, there was a season in his life that if he knew, something he would have done in that season would have changed his life. Every man struggling in ministry, according to the justice of God, there is always a moment where an opportune time comes, but it will look like any other day. Listen, I want to show you something right now that will bless you. Are you ready? So the Bible says... The sons of Issachar possess two qualities that we need to receive tonight. That is the key to maximizing seasons. Number one is the faculty to discern times. Number two, the ability to know what to do. Two things. John chapter 5. Let's go to John chapter 5. John 5, beginning from verse 1. Please pay attention. This is where the key is now. After this, there was a feast of the Jews. Listen carefully. 
And Jesus went up unto Jerusalem, reading to verse 9. Please be patient. It says, Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. What happened there? In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, waiting. Waiting. That was all they did there. Waiting. Whoever told you waiting is a waste of time. Waiting is the skill of the mighty. They know that you do not strike every time. Ask a general in the army. If you want to know how to win war, you must not only master the art of fighting, you must know how to wait. Watch how the lion, the lion is called the king of the jungle, but the lion does not strike every time. A lion can wait for five hours, allowing a head to relax. That is the price for the catch. That is the price for that title. Please go back to that scripture. The Bible says, the moment you find out you are incapacitated, the first thing you should do is to wait. There are many people who move while they are failing. When, if you drive on 150 in the wrong direction, you are only prolonging your pain. When you, someone tells you, I am at so, so, so place, you will tell the person, if you want to help him and reduce sorrow, you will say, wait there. I am coming to help you. If the person keeps moving while you are going there, he's only prolonging his time. For someone here, God sent me to tell you, wait. You have been roaming around. It is clear that your, your ideas are not working. Man of God, it is clear that your approach to ministry is not working. It is not more ministrations you need. It is not more name you need. You need to lock yourself and wait. Businessman, is not traveling from Paris to UK to America. No, it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. This is a prophetic word for someone. We live in a generation where we pride in rushing. There is a difference between speed and rushing. Speed is always a product of waiting. God gives men speed, but he does not rush men. To rush means to disrespect season. When God gives you speed, is to maximize season. There is a difference between rushing. Hallelujah. We live in a world where people will see the results of many years of a man and want to just claim it overnight. God gives speed, but I repeat, precious people of God, there are certain things that only happen at the sequence of times and seasons. It's why many people today are getting into all kinds of things because in as much as they want to, they think they want to have it fast. And don't get me wrong, God gives speed. But there are certain things you cannot rush. A pregnant woman cannot rush the arrival of her child. It's been programmed already. When you give birth to a child that is not in the season, it's not called delivery. There is another name for it. Politician, this is a prophetic word for you. Wait. Man of God, the secret to your maximizing the next one year. Wait. Businessman, as much as God has vowed and promised increase for you, the prophetic word that God is giving you tonight is wait. Let's go back to John 4 so we tie it. John 5, please. The Bible says, impotent folks, they were aware that they were incapacitated and did not have the power to help them. They respected and honored the season by waiting. They were waiting for the moving of the water. It was the water that was moving. But them, they had to wait. Verse 5. My story begins now. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Somebody say long standing issue. One more time. Say long standing issue. It is amazing 
that as powerful as time is, time does not change anything. Time only reveals. One day ago, better is absolute nonsense. No. The passage of time is not what changes things. Maximizing seasons is what changes things. I am sure that after two years of lying down there, the man said by the third year I will be fine. Not knowing that it was 38. If Jesus did not come to rescue this man, 38 would have become 50. Is someone learning now? The Bible says when Jesus saw him, remember he was not the only one there. But something, oh, this is the thing about Jesus. This is the thing about Jesus. The Bible says the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He's slow to anger and rich in love. That no matter how a man messes up seasons, when Jesus sees you, he does not even talk about the seasons wasted. Adumbrated in the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son wasted his seasons. And the Bible says he came to himself and he said, how many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father. And I will say, father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son take me as one of your servants the bible says while he was afar off as soon as the father met him there was no discussion about wasted seasons the father restored the signet ring put a robe of honor and took him to the home for a feast for someone here i want you to know that in as much as God honors seasons he's still a merciful God he is Lord over seasons and it is still not too late apostle i got born again at 50 how long will it take me to know the holy spirit to build a relationship find strength the lord of the season is your god as powerful as seasons are they submit to the god of the bible that means you shouldn't be surprised that although you are here a tenant by december you are still in a house God will give you a house that you did not build. And people will say, no, 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 no. I, I, I thought we, we, we concluded that your life is already wasted. And you will say, I came to a conference and I found out. If you do not understand all of these things, you cannot understand the mystery of Jubilee. <laughs> Jubilee is not the name of a season. It's an event that happens within a season are we together let's finish this let me walk with time please back to john 5 the bible says and jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now there now a long time and he said unto him will thou be made whole in other words Based on my design of times and seasons, you shouldn't be here. Many seasons have come and given you an opportunity to rise. Could you not discern them? And the important man said, sir, my excuse is I have no man. When the water is troubled, that means I have gone so far to know the season, but I did not know that to help me make the action, it says to put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, let me show you that I have authority over seasons. This is not the time for you to rise. But the Lord of the season says, rise. This is Jubilee. Right there. Because you will see that there is Jubilee that happens after seven Sabbaths. But there is jubilee personified in a person every time jesus comes it is your season his presence can reprogram jubilee any day any time oh. oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of god Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn it, and I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love. Hallelujah. 
Is someone learning? So John chapter 5 reveals to us that no matter how long a situation is, once you know how to wait, there are two ways to receive a miracle based on John chapter 5. Number one is to wait for seasons and take the required action. Number two is to look for Jesus. If for any reason you miss out in seasons, you don't wait until seasons come again because sometimes it takes a long time for it to come. You have to look for Jesus. Jesus is the reprogrammer of seasons. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? If that man waited there, he would have multiplied his pain. Jesus taught us Two lessons one that the best way for a man to maximize seasons in his life is number one to be able to know that God builds this system based on the law of times and seasons and you must sustain the discernment the faculty to understand seasons in your life are we together now and then to know the required action to take there are some of you for instance your destiny helper was in power for many years he would not be there forever within that time you had unusual access it was a season but you used this honor to prolong your pain and that season finished you discovered you were supposed to use honor to have access but at that time the person is no longer there there are some of you there was a season where your parents were alive you would have sought them and received their blessing but you were occupied trying to make money and you never got the blessing and now sadly they've passed just when they passed you now understood the power of patriarchal blessing and you're saying apostle now that my father is gone is there a way that god can help me i will tell you shortly the bible says there is hope for a tree that even if it be cut short at the scent of water hallelujah the time i should have come to church and grown spiritually i spent it on riotous living and right now i don't have that luxury of time again can god do something about my life yes sir mm. yes sir and jabez was more honorable than his brethren the Bible tells us the end of the life of Jabez. Then he says the mother named him Jabez because she bore him in sorrow. And you can imagine as a young man, doors closing, no favor. One day he said, no, I have to take my destiny by my hand. And he said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. And he prayed that prayer and the Bible says God answered him. And that was the change of his life. Please hear me. I wish I had the time. Would have extensively dealt with Leviticus 25. Where you find the law of Jubilee. That according to God's economy and design. That after every seven years a Sabbath is declared. And that there is a grace that is upon the land that makes it yield of its own. And when it is seven Sabbaths. The year after seven Sabbaths is declared as Jubilee and that there are a number of activities that happen during Jubilee. One of it is for any reason if there is slavery around a person and that person cannot release himself by reason of paying what is due. Once it falls within the season of Jubilee, you must declare that person free. So liberty is one of the signatures of Jubilee. Number two is rest. Even the land is allowed to rest. This is the dimension of Jubilee I've brought by the Spirit of God to speak over our lives. Number one, liberty from all captivities and then rest. The Bible speaking about Joshua, it says that the Lord gave him rest round about and there was not anything that the Lord said that fell short. All came to pass. 
we are celebrating 50 years of the hand of God upon this veteran of the gospel only God knows how it was two years five years 15 years many people here were not born when he started the journey of faith blind faith in the name of the Lord Lord I trust you and I know that you will lead me 50 years old anything is a serious matter 50 years old trouble is real trouble 50 years old joy is is very strong and potent joy hallelujah today we stand to celebrate the mighty hand of god 50 years do you know the kind of spirits that a man must have circumvented by the power of the blood to survive 50 years even jesus knew the kind of spirits that were associated with the bloodline he came from nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth jesus did not say you are wrong go and find out the spirit that had eaten nazarenes where was samson that people rise and never stay you would think that jesus died early only that he finished his assignment but that spirit does not allow for long life please pay attention to what i'm saying There are spirits that make sure that in a family the men serve the women if you like go to america for donkey years you will return back as if they drove you there from the prison spirits so when you survive 50 years it is a testament of endurance is proof of valiancy you have mastered the weapons of war You see, let me tell you the truth. We live in a generation where unconsciously or consciously we have brought ourselves to make dishonor look marketable. Where we disrespect people's sacrifices. We just think it was a mistake. That man was just lucky to be a billionaire. He was just lucky to be anointed. I think that prophesying is just God just helping him once and for all. Or once in a while. No. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. Longevity is proof of mastery. You have laid hold on something. Hallelujah. 50 years. So I celebrate the ministry and everyone who is connected, the membership, sons and daughters, pillars who have stood with this ministry, for 50 years is someone clapping and celebrating the god of jubilee for his mighty hand he said if the lord had not been by our side now may israel say except the lord builds a house the bible says they labor in vain that build it and except the lord watches over the city said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he giveth his beloved sleep hallelujah but number two now that you have celebrated we have to invoke the blessings that come with jubilee that means someone must refuse and say i i am part of this vision and i know what jubilee means lord i take advantage of your grace and i take advantage of the prophetic season that i am in as a bona fide covenant beneficiary of this grace hallelujah that when you are in that season of jubilee you can say lord i advocate my exodus from shame from reproach from causes from activities that are connected to ancestry if my biological father is dead the one god has given me in the spirit is alive and lord it will still suffice as far as my liberty is concerned he said who's seen that this man was born blind him or his father hallelujah there are not many 50 years in a man's lifetime so this 50 years the next time it will happen again is 50 years you see new year happens every year but jubilee happens sometimes in a man's entire lifetime once 
in modern history we do not know anybody who has celebrated more than three jubilees so this is a very prophetic defining moment hallelujah when i came into the office and i saw this great father standing no stick no bending no it looked as if if we ran he will even outrun me i thought to myself even though i came to preach this jubilee is not for word of life alone this jubilee is for any wise person who understands that when your heart is open you can receive hallelujah oh i came with my own token of honor too not to be, i i'm too young to waste my time whatever grace i know people who are 40 and cannot stand strong they can't climb a staircase three and and they are breathing as if they dug a well the grace for long life and health that god has placed upon the angel of this house i stand in agreement with that grace word of life hear me in the name of jesus from today let there be no infant of days again let there be no infant of days again are you ready to pray now in one minute before i give you some prayer points i want you to look at this vessel of glory this man of god this father spiritually and biologically everything you have seen god do in his life for these 50 years open up your heart and begin to receive by faith go ahead and pray lord you have granted him speed i receive it come on are there people that pray here health and longevity i receive it in the name of jesus strength global visibility hallelujah now let me wrap up please hear me let me quickly give you three keys there are three keys that help people maximize seasons especially prophetic seasons like jubilee i will run through them number one is called discernment discernment is the faculty of spiritual perception the ability to perceive men for what they stand for spiritually when elijah was going to go elisha told him i desire a double portion of your anointing he said if you can see me was he not looking at him he that receives a prophet as touching the office you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother what you will receive is information about the family welfare that's a brother's reward please listen discernment the lord was in this place and i knew not discernment discernment two men were going to emmaus and the resurrected christ was in their midst but because they lack discernment proximity does not just mean you will be blessed it takes discernment they were with jesus and yet it had no effect on them the bible says they sat at table when he broke the bread their eyes were opened and he vanished he didn't have the time again to talk with them a season of discussion they probably would have become apostles too like paul if they maximize that time but time was going and their eyes were closed discernment the miracle of open eyes is a real miracle then open he their understanding that they might understand scripture hallelujah listen if your eyes is closed you can stand near breakthrough you can stand near anointed people and never have the eyes that see the bible says in sodom and gomorrah are we still together now we're about to pray that in sodom and gomorrah when the angels came to the house of lot 
the man here wanted to sodomize the angels and lot was even willing to give his daughters and the bible says the people refused they were hesitant and what happened was that the angels drew lot in and struck them with blindness and the bible says they wearied themselves in front of the door in front of where in front of an opportunity in front of an anointing in front of a season but because your hand can be well if your eyes is closed you will weary yourself someone needs to pray this man i'm always calling my father this woman i'm always calling my mother this one i'm always calling my elder brother this one i'm always calling a ceo who is he in the spirit? What grace was upon this woman that even though she did not go to school, she raised eight children without begging. That is more than hard work. There is an anointing behind the frail, uneducated woman. If all you are seeing is just mama who can set firewood, you will not receive anything. But the day you look at someone who is captain over many, a woman who did not go to school and raise children and the least of them is a noble personality there is a grace you need to start seeing men for what they stand for in the spirit he said no we no man after the flesh is someone learning so number one discernment number two the obedience of faith seasons will always demand that you take action seasons will always demand that you take action the awareness of the seasons alone does not bring you breakthrough the man in john 5 knew the season but he did not have the grace nor the skill to take the action while i am trying i made efforts mm. this is where wisdom is profitable to direct because when the axe head is blunt there will be efforts but there will be wastage you need the grace and the wisdom that directs the action for someone there is a season where god tells you go and register that company first there is an unusual grace nationally territorially and spiritually there is a vista that has been opened for certain things there are certain people when a season opens for you you should go into fasting and prayer immediately because there is a grace that god is releasing it's like an unusual portal if you were not in the upper room on the day of pentecost even if you went to ease yourself that is it because the, the, the it came on only those who were there if you had attended the lecture for long and you say listen let me run and go and greet my mother you will return back and find out the holy ghost god loves everybody but he visited those who were waiting in the room when you discern seasons it's a call for responsibility for someone you are in a season right now where you have an opportunity to establish strategic relationships because according to the law of seasons rainy season always comes with a letter from dry season i am coming dry season always comes with a letter from rainy season don't just enjoy rainy season read the letter that it came with every season comes with a letter from another season coming this was the mystery of pharaoh's dream it says five um, um uh, 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 the, the seven seven fatted calves and then the lean ones ate them twice and joseph said it's the same thing god is showing you a modus operandi that cannot change for these seven years now make max for someone god is giving you this window of opportunity stop living a fake life maximize build relationships build capacity because there is something called your season of appearing and john remained in the wilderness until his season of appearing man of god now that nobody has identified your grace yet now that nobody is placing a demand on you don't go around saying invite me prepare for the seasons so that when the time comes you you have, would have built stamina to survive the demand because if you fail in the day of battle if you turn aside the diagnosis is that your strength is small number three the third way we maximize seasons is through the mystery of sacrifice please listen listen 
sacrifice is not all about money in fact sacrifice is not even about anything material it's a spiritual transaction so when i say sacrifice don't just shut your mind to think you are talking of money money is the least expression of sacrifice the first sacrifice is you please listen carefully sacrifice the bible says gather unto me my saints psalm 50 and verse 5 they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice when Baal refused to answer and the prophets of Baal exhausted all their skill and their option the last key to provoke the realm of the spirit in their thoughts and imagination was to lacerate themselves they started by lacerating the animals it did not work they came to themselves there is something called a living sacrifice he said i beseech you brethren romans 12 and verse 1 that you offer your bodies unto god a living sacrifice he calls it holy and acceptable unto god and the bible says it is your reasonable worship or act of service and then verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the greek word aeon it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove that which that good acceptable and perfect will of god paul said let no man trouble me i bear upon my body it is not only the anointing that is on me there is a scar that is a testament that i stretch myself to maximize seasons there are times where you pray like never before there are times you fast like never before there are times that you give like never before there are times you serve like never before seasons word of life hear me when a visitation came to the house of cornelius in acts chapter 10 i hope you know that was the foundation of the experience of the gentiles into the faith from chapter 1 of acts to chapter 9 no gentile had the privilege of partaking of that life because salvation was for the jews first let me show you somebody who pulled the testimony of salvation from the jews to reach the gentiles when peter came to the house of cornelius the angel appeared to cornelius and he said two things there were two things that made this possible one your prayer two your arms this is what brought me sacrifice is never complete there is a difference between giving and sacrifice the difference is that it will cost you i will not give unto god anything people have abused the issue of sacrifice once you hear sacrifice people just think you can give a lot of money and not give sacrifice because it's not about money god is not a politician god is not a i mean he's a god of heaven you can carry money and drop it and the realm of the spirit says nonsense because if there is a vetting system in the realm of the spirit before a man's giving is approved the macedonian church first gave on themselves before their substance is someone hearing now but let me tell you sincerely even god as powerful as god is he did not change the season of sin and the dominion of sin over man by casting it god did not cast sin out of man even though he was the creator of the heavens and the earth he did not send angel michael he didn't send gabriel he didn't send the four living creatures when it was time for him to take the issue of the destiny of man serious he sent his son his only begotten at that point john chapter 3 this was jesus himself teaching nicodemus the dynamics of the kingdom he came to him by night the bible says nicodemus came to him by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these miracles except god be with him and that began the discussion that led to chapter 16 for god so loved the world that he gave god so loved the world he knew that there was a season an opportune time and he gave jesus when jesus was at gethsemane he was almost tempted to renegotiate salvation can you take this cup off me but god was determined to see that men are saved if you use one thousand naira to buy a drink it means you value that drink more than the one thousand that's why you are able to part with it 
so the, the apostle said behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us because he conferred us he brought us as many sons today jesus is not the only begotten of the father he is the firstborn among we the begotten because of sacrifice please hear me please hear me i'm wrapping up now whether it is satan you serve or jesus you serve you will always walk with the law of sacrifice if you choose and donate yourself to the devil the first thing he will demand of you is sacrifice you choose to serve a herbalist the first thing he would demand is sacrifice you come to god it is in the matter of sacrifice that both god and satan agree that it is a law escaping sacrifice using the guise of christianity is a joke let me tell you sincerely and i submit to you there are dimensions you will never step into until you understand the mystery of sacrifice i wish i had time i would have told you my stories don't think people just come out of nowhere that, that is a joke the realm of the spirit is so strict in its operation you cannot bribe your way through mm -mm. ask cain and abel they, you, you you can't manipulate your way through he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake you know why because there is blood dripping upon their altar when a, a death sentence came by a genuine prophet in chapter 38 of isaiah to hezekiah he said okay i respect your ministry i can't doubt you you have a credible voice but leave me and god he turned his face to the wall he didn't say god add yes he said remember when did you change oh god when have you started ignoring sacrifices have you forgotten can i tell you the truth there are men who are standing today upon the sacrifices of many years they have built it has risen as a memorial in the realm of the spirit yes sir when cain killed abel he thought everything was all right the blood of abel went to the altar in heaven and started crying and god had that voice there are people you cannot touch the blood upon their altar has a potent voice no enchantment and no divination against them can stand hallelujah please rise up on your feet your day of visitation your day of visitation your day of visitation the bible says in hebrews chapter 4 help that lady please he said they heard the word just like we did but it did not profit them not being mixed with faith in fact the bible says it this way there remained a rest there is a sabbath for the people of god he says that if they had received the sabbath he would no longer talk about it that means every year kept proposing a sabbath god was saying you can step into certain levels of rest for someone here maybe you were in this convention last year and god gave you an opportunity but you were not discerning to step into your rest now god has granted another opportunity again maybe a man of god according to god's schedule you were supposed to have contacted an anointing last year and by now your ministry should have scaled heights but you did not discern i pray that like jacob you will not waste this second time jacob wasted it in chapter 28 and chapter 32 he was strong enough to say i'm not leaving you we are going to pray just one minute and then i'm going to respectfully plead with our father to come and stand in his capacity and declare because jubilee you see is a feast that goes with trumpets the assignment of a trumpet is to announce an end of a season and to open another the ram's horn was a mystery shofar even the return of christ will be by the trumpet the blast of the trumpet of an archangel the feast of trumpets is a mystery sorry we may not have the time tonight but let's pray is someone ready to pray prayer point number one say father one more time louder say father in the name of jesus 
I decree and declare. Release discernment upon my life. Open my eyes to discern and maximize seasons. Go ahead and begin to pray. Open my eyes. Someone pray, someone pray. Season. The miracle of open eyes. The miracle of discernment. In Jesus name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Prayer point number two. I'd like you to pray. The grace to take prompt action. The Bible says when the Lord came to Abraham in Genesis 22. It says Abraham take down thy son. Thy only son whom thou lovest. And take upon a mountain that I will show you. The Bible says Abraham arose early. Obedience is time dependent. You are going to pray for grace to take the necessary actions promptly. Are we together? It takes grace to take action on time. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive empowerment to act in obedience. Lift your voice and pray. The grace for obedience. Obedience in prayer. Obedience in fasting. Obedience in keeping to the terms of scripture. The obedience of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. It is not knowing that brings you results. It is the grace to engage the truths that you know. The last prayer point. You are going to pray and say, Father, grant me the grace to make the requisite level of sacrifice in this season that will shift me to step into the blessings of Jubilee. Lift your voice and begin to pray. The grace. My Father, the grace. The grace, the grace for sacrifice. The in the name of Jesus hear me for some of you the sacrifice that God is demanding from you right now is extended periods of intense consecration and prayer for some of you the sacrifice that God is demanding from you right now is the extended period of word study to camp with Jesus till something falls upon your life for some of you the sacrifice God is demanding right now is a prophetic seed from you not something you reach down a pocket and remove as if you are bribing God something that there is a difference between Ishmael and Isaac when you give Isaac you will know listen 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 I fear God and I love you too much I will not deceive you there is a place of commitment a sacrifice that touches the altar to say Lord this is for my children ending I, I wish I had time I would have shown you a king in the Bible that during a time of war defeat was imminent already and he took his son and slew the son the first son the Bible says an indignation rose against the people of God before God hmm. there are seeds that can change seasons believe me there are some of you your church is not opening up stop roaming around and going on in circles and making all kinds of assumptions this grace bar if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that there are people in business respectfully speaking you have tried and tried 
Worry is a place, a land of abundance. You can be in a city, yet spiritually the two lift gates have not been opened. Yes, sir. Just because you are in a city does not mean the gates are open. You can be in a city for many years. I come from the north and when you pass many northern states, there is what they call a city gate. It's a prophetic thing, even though most of it has a lot of witchcraft connotations. Until you pass that gate, you are not yet in the city. Some of you have been in worry for 10 years, 20 years, but in the realm of the spirit, you are still outside the city. So the blessing and the riches from that city does not come to you. Because the Bible says, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. It says the increase of the, the earth is for all. Where is your portion? Because God is a God of portions. You need to provoke certain seasons. Sacrifice works on the law of death and resurrection. God himself used that. Because except a corn of wheat falls to the ground, it abides alone. For someone God is speaking to you, you need to sit with your wife, sit with your company, and say, what is the jubilee sacrifice that I have to bring before the Lord? If you don't believe it, don't do it. The, I told you, sacrifice is not all about money. Remember what I said? There are many people giving God money and God is saying, it's you I want. Keep your money first. You can bring money and come and drop it. You are just doing politics. God wants your heart first. There is something called an acceptable worship. Your heart and then your giving. But by all means, don't give God your heart alone. That sacrifice, it is true. We are going to pray. I pray over you in the name of Jesus I stand upon this grace before I request our father to come and make a jubilee prophetic declaration here at this session but I stand under the corporate anointing of every man of God woman of God here represented word of life and all who are connected all who are following by a live broadcast or a rebroadcast in the name of Jesus here in this season of jubilee i sound a shofar in the realm of the spirit and i declare let it be a season of exodus from every calamity everything that represents shame reproach delay retrogression ichabod that proverb that has been used over you in the name of jesus christ I declare seasons change seasons change seasons change hallelujah Genesis help that woman please Genesis chapter 24 or 21 from verse 1 the Bible says and God visited Sarah as he had said and God did unto Sarah as he has spoken God only does what he has said. He does not do what you want. He does what you want that is consistent with what he has said. The assignment of God's power is to look for what God has said. The power of God has no ministry until it finds what God has said. The anointing is the validator of the speakings of God. So if God has not spoken, the anointing can be dormant. I prophesied as I was commanded he said and there was a sound let me speak over someone whether in your ministry whether in your business this Jubilee anointing I declare let it rest on the works of your hands let it rest on your family let it rest on your children in the name of Jesus I declare rest round about rest round about rest round about hallelujah i prophesied deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 to 12 over your life you are blessed in the city you are blessed in the country in the name of jesus christ i prophesied psalm 112 over your life he said blessed is the man that feared the lord that delighted greatly in his commands he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth 
I prophesy that your seed is mighty. He said the generations of the upright shall be blessed. May your children and your children's children be blessed. He says wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endureth forever. The memorial of your impact will not be eroded. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please hear me. My time is up. But I have to do this. I'm bound by my covenant of loyalty to the cross to ensure that I make a call. Even if it is one call. My apologies. Please let me just a minute. It is impossible that in a gathering like this there would be not one person who needs to be saved. The Bible says, and the Lord added daily not as many as should serve, as many as should be saved first. Hallelujah. There are people here who are saying, I came for this Jubilee conference and while hearing you speak, truly, if I'm to be honest, if I'm to be sincere, my ways have not been right with God. There are others who are saying, I have never truly made this commitment unto Jesus. I have come to church. I come to church. I am sincere. There are yet others who are saying, Apostle, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but as it is right now, I cannot say I am a child of God. The church is not a cinema center. The church is not just a place of entertainment. Believe me when I tell you, no matter what we do, if we ignore the salvation of the souls of men, then it is incomplete. I want to make an altar call right now. I'm going to count one to five. Above me, uh, below me here and those who are falling online the overflows outside i'm going to count one to five you are saying apostle i need jesus now and there is nothing to be ashamed of as i count one to five i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and i want you to come and just kneel at the altar or stand there if you can at the count of five i will pray win that war of destiny right now and don't wait for anyone to be the first don't say I'm waiting to see who comes. It's, this is a personal affair. I begin my counting now. Run to Jesus. One. Okay, those who are in the gallery, there's a request that you just stand right in front of me here so that you are not able to go, you are not uh, create any disruption. Please come. Those in front, just come right here. I'm going to see you. God bless you. Word of life, is this how you celebrate salvation? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. I want you to lift your right hand for all of you who are standing. I see you, we see you. And those who are uh, by the altar, please lift your right hand as a sign of surrender to Jesus. And I'm speaking to someone right now who may be following from across the globe. Maybe Europe, America, Asia, Africa, some state here in Nigeria. Or probably you are listening to a rebroadcast. Here is an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? There is always something. Your participatory role that you have to play for eternal life to be yours. Lift your right hand. I want you to say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you love me. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I declare that Jesus is my savior. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and I declare that Jesus is my King 
from tonight eternal life is in my spirit i declare that i go from glory to glory and from grace to grace i am a child of god amen father thank you for this once you have brought them by your spirit the bible says as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these ones have come declaring their faith in jesus and by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven i call you the righteousness of god in christ jesus i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over your life from tonight until forever you walk in the newness of life you are saved you are born again to the glory of god the father in the name of jesus christ amen now some cards have been given to you congratulations i want you to follow the directive now all of you um please listen listen very carefully you will be directed by an official right now officials please can you wave your hand so that they see you okay i'm told that those upstairs just move to the back someone will be directing you and someone will be there please all of you together life 16 let your light so shine the bible says let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven jesus began a discussion and he was letting the people listening to him he he told them he started by saying from verse 13 that you are the salt of the earth and he says if the salt has lost its sever wherewith shall it be salted that it is good for nothing except to be cast down and trodden underfoot by men and then he says you are the light of the world you are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden he says neither do men light their lamp and put it under a bushel but upon a candlestick or a lampstand that it may give light to all who are in the house knowing this he leaves you with an instruction permit your light if it is true that you are the light and you have light he says let that light so shine so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven so we have here a mandate to allow our light to so shine and he tells you that he wants the light to so shine before men not just in the realm of the spirit that it will shine before men he wants men to see that light that shines because in seeing it they will glorify the father john chapter 6 and verse 28 a gentleman asked the lord a very interesting question john 6 28 then said they unto him what shall we do that we might walk the walks of god just keep the scripture there 28 so there is such a thing called the walk of god 628 please leave the scripture there 628 what shall we do it's a question that we might walk the walks that does not belong to the realm of men there are some walks called the walks of god that means this one is notable we cannot trace it to an, earth, an earthly origin this dimension of result this realm of possibility is beyond the realm and the scope of men and they are asking him a question tell us what must we do we know that there is a responsibility component to this we cannot sit down and just allow our lives hoping that it will work the works of god what shall we do we want to see extraordinary manifestations and demonstrations of the power the grace and the possibilities of heaven but the question is what shall we do the question is not can the works of god happen it is what must we do what must i do to walk the works of god
it is important for believers to understand that the life we have been called to, just like your lovely worship team sang, that this Zoe life we have been given is a life that has within it limitless spiritual possibilities. It is not the God kind of life. It is God's very life. If it is the God kind of life, it means another Holy Spirit gave us. But it is the very Spirit of Christ that administered that life. It's not just the kind. It is the very life of God. And the Zoe life is beyond eternal life. Because that quality is superior to just longevity. Even those who die without Christ will experience eternal life. It is just in a dimension that is not heaven. Are we together? So when you preach to sinners, you don't ask them, will you spend eternity? The question is location, not the possibility. In the story of Lazarus, Lazarus and the rich man, when they were done with earth, they were still alive, but in another dimension. Are we together? So it's a superior quality of life that we have been given. But it's important for you to know that even though it is a fact from scripture that when we encounter the son, we have this life because the Lord structured the administration of the life of God such that you must encounter the son to have that life. He says, this is the record that God had given us eternal life. Is that true? He says, but this life is in his son. That means if you tell me you have that life, I have to verify whether you have met the son. If you have not met the son, then it is not the life of God. Hallelujah. But then just because you have the life, listen carefully please, in all its, its potential, you can spend all the days of your earth walk not unraveling the limitless possibilities that are contained in that life. Is that true? Yeah. For instance, I can give you a gadget or a device that sustains many, many possibilities. But you can hold that gadget and so underutilize it that it almost becomes a burden to you. Until that gadget steps into the hand of someone else who is equipped with the requisite level of revelation, then you will begin to see the potential. And then while you admire his use of that gadget, he will tell you you are holding the exact same thing. Hallelujah. I used to use a phone, I think before this or the one, before, I don't know which one, but one time I saw a Chinese man using my same phone. We were flying somewhere and I could not believe what he was doing with it. Now, I'm not, I'm quite frankly not a gadget person. It doesn't really, once I can do the basic things, I'm content. I saw what this man was doing. My same phone, only that it was in Chinese, everything was written there. And I mean with, with mastery. I said, you see what ignorance can do? I'm seated here with someone by my side and he's teaching me a lesson the pain of underutilizing under great things because of ignorance that for me was a lesson there are many people who are active recipients of this life today you sang it you rejoiced over it but then he says if it is true that that life is within you he says let your light so shine let it shine before men that they may see. There is a testimony that God is waiting for that will not come just from you. It will come from those who see the wonder-working power, the display of the works of God in and through your life. It says that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. So there are demands the truth is that it is in our destiny in Christ to be proof producers. That your life consistently becomes a message and a living episode. Every day, episode after episode, you never plateau. The Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light. Are we learning? That shines brighter and brighter even unto the perfect day. Unfortunately, many believers do not even scratch 
the surface of the potential of this life that we have, nor do they ever command the levels and the kinds of results that bring glory to the name of the Lord. It takes more than singing it. It takes more than reciting it. Your life must demonstrate the reality. Hallelujah. It was our father, God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, that said, only fools doubt proofs. The end of every argument is an evidence. When there is an evidence before you, it brings to end every argument. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible talks to us about the man who was at Gate Beautiful. And he was there for many, 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 only God knows how long. Then the Bible says one time Peter and John went to pray. It was the hour of prayer. And they met that man. He looked on them expecting to receive alms. And he said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, he says, rise up and walk. He lifted the man and the man got up. And because of that miracle, the noise that came from that miracle, it, it, he did not have to say anything. One genuine miracle made noise until he was summoned. The council called him and they said, you must defend what we are hearing. Is it a rumor? The good news is that he did not go alone. He went with his evidence. He stood before them, the Bible says. Then he began to narrate the basic. And the Bible says when they heard what he said, even though they did not want to believe it, they could not deny. Now, this is what we are talking about. You don't need to like what you are hearing. But once the evidence stands before you, listen, do you know how Jesus began to preach? In one of the synoptic accounts, he did not begin with a sermon. He began with strange wonders. Imagine you wake up in the morning and the headlines everywhere is strange. Who is this young man moving from place to place? And when he was done, then he said, now you are ready to listen. And everybody came and sat down. And he began to teach them. Even if you were uncomfortable with what he was saying, how could you deny what was happening? The reason why for many of us we do not command the attention of our territories is there is too much speaking without the evidence that validates the truthfulness of what you are saying. So when you say God is faithful, you stand alone. When you say God can give speed, you stand alone. When you say God can restore, you stand alone. And there is no evidence in the name of Jesus. And by reason of this conference, you will no longer stand alone speaking. There will be notable evidences that stand before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, you see, the kingdom was designed such that you would not even have to speak for too long. Your speaking is just to introduce the presence of the evidence. And the evidence will continue the speaking. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he did not waste his time with long grammar from morning till night. He introduced himself and said, I was sent. And I know that you are going to doubt it. But here is the evidence that I met God. And the rod continued to do the speaking. Are we together? Everybody say, I believe in results. Believe. One more time. Say, I believe in results. Please sit down. What must I do to walk the works of God? I have studied very carefully by the Spirit of God the subject of supernatural living, the subject of results, because it is my determination as a person and as a child of God that as much as it is within my power and by the advantage of God's grace, that my life becomes sufficient result that can bring, it can compel nations to see that he's alive and to reintroduce dimensions of his power even to my generation. And so that consistently has been my study. Please pay attention to what you are about to hear. I want to show you the missing link because there are many people who desire to see the power of God. There are many people who desire to see dramatic results across their lives, and they may be sincere and even well-meaning, except that in this kingdom, every level of result is knowledge-driven. Every level and every dimension of results 
is knowledge driven. Again, it's our father in the Lord, Bishop Oyedeko, who said, do not assume anything. He said, learn everything. Do not assume anything. Once it is not working in your life, take responsibility. You do not know it. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So let me share with us what I wrote here as the dynamics of the supernatural. That if you walk these keys and activate them in your life, then everything you heard the man of God declare and challenge you towards will become your experience in here and now. If you believe that, shout a loud amen. amen. The first key, you want to walk the walks of God. You want to see the supernatural, notable, undeniable dimensions of the hand of God in ministry, in finances, in whatever area. The first requirement, non-negotiable requirement is light. Light. The power of light. Sufficient spiritual illumination. Knowledge and understanding. Please write it down. Light. John chapter 1 and verse 3. John chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says all things were made by him. The him there being the word. In fact, John 1 and verse 1 says, In the beginning, God, I mean, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Is that true? And the word was God. Verse 2 says, The same was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, All things, how many things? Including extraordinary finances. Does it, is it part of all things? Including an enviable destiny. All things were made by him. And he says without him. That means outside of his influence and participation was not anything made that was made. And then verse 4 says, In him was life. Everybody say in him was life. And that that life was the light of man. So you know where the light comes from now. In him, the word was life. And that life now translates to the light. In him was life. And that life was the light of man. So when you are in search for light, where do you go to? The word of God is the exclusive custodian of God's light. Very powerful. Light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, still speaking about the word of God that produces light. Colossians 1, 16. It says, for by him were all things created. Is that in your Bible? The things that are in heaven, the things that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 32, Acts 20 and verse 32, he says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able, in it is ability to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. So among them that are sanctified, not, not everybody has that inheritance. They are still sanctified. But among them that are sanctified, a few people can be separated who become possessors in experience. And he says it is the word. The word will come in the midst of those who are sanctified and separate a few people. May you be part of those people in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be a notable Christian. It will be clear in your, that your life is not ordinary. It will not just be a cliche nor a blind confession. A walking, living epistle of the mighty power and grace of God. Everybody say light. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Light according to scripture represents understanding. It represents knowledge. 
Here's what it says. The labor of the foolish, the foolish here not being an insult, is a description of a state. Are we together? The labor of the foolish, where yet every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The labor of the foolish, where yet every one of them. Psalm 45 and verse 4. Psalm 45 and verse 4. 45 and verse 4, Psalms. It says, Ride prosperously in your majesty. Ride prosperously because of truth. So your triumphant entry is not about desire alone. If you must have a triumphant entry to your place of honor, you will ride prosperously. The chariot that you carry you into that place of dominion and honor is truth. Are we learning? So everything we seek to come into its reality in this kingdom is dependent on light. Now please hear me. Please listen very carefully. No amount of prayer, no amount of fasting, no amount of spiritual activity will replace the genuine pursuit for light. All of these experiences are wonderful. But when you ignore, in ignorance, they are powerless. What empowers fasting? What empowers prayer? What empowers giving? What empowers spiritual activity? The battery that gives these activities their power is the light that supports them. Not the activity in itself. You can fast and not obtain any results. You can pray and not obtain any results. In fact, I tell you, you can drop a seed down and not obtain any result. What turns your seed from donation to a spiritual transaction in the realm of the spirit? God himself being a witness is not the money, it's not your hands, it's not your dropping it down. It's the revelation that powered that activity. Are we together? He said, who do men say that I the son of man am? And he said, some say you are this and that. He said, but who do you say that I am? They kept quiet. And Peter said, I know who thou art. Thou art Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed. So that level of certainty is the level of revelation, not assumption. You can hold a beautiful clock. Even if it was gold plated, once there is no battery, it will stand as a monument before you. That is how spiritual activities remain powerless, waiting for light. How many of you have seen that when the power holding company, when there is no light, all the lovely gadgets in your house do not have to disappear, but you are still frustrated. Because what powers it? Your AC is there, two horsepower, three horsepower, whatever horsepower with the warranty on it. And yet, you can sit there wondering. Your fridge is there with all kinds of things there. And simply because one principal factor was not in place. The fridge is not spoiled. You can even buy another one. It, the effect will still be the same. You can say, no, no, no. It's not Panasonic. I want, I want Sony. I want this. The effect will be the same. But with one blink of light, everything instantaneously. Listen, do you know no matter how long light has been off the moment it comes it does not take time for the gadgets to respond at the instance of light the darkness the light will not calculate the times of darkness without it and then cover it slowly the gadget that has stayed not powered for two days not powered for one year not powered for one week not powered for one hour they will respond the same way the moment the light is off let me prophesy to someone i don't care how long you have waited in the name of jesus the son of the living god at the instance of light go forward at the instance of light make progress in the name of jesus christ please sit down John chapter 1 and verse 5. 
It says, and the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Is someone learning? The first requirement for extraordinary manifestations, extraordinary results, is not desire, is light. So you arise and shine according to Isaiah 60 and verse 1. I will always like to quote it from Amplified. It says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise from the depression and the prostration which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. You don't arise because you are tired of sitting. You arise because your light is come. It says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. That means the miracle that controls your rising is light. When God wants to show a man mercy, he shortens the distance between you and the light that should lift you. When God wants to show you mercy, he will shorten the distance between you and the light that you need to encounter. But for as long as there is darkness, the dominion of evil remains undisturbed. It will remain there. Light. The word of God, which is the principal communicator of light. You may have heard me teach it. Listen carefully now. That the word of God essentially contains three things. Number one promises please write number two principles number three prophecies every time you open scripture you are having an encounter with these three spiritual dimensions number one again promises god's commitment to you number two principles showing you the modus operandi of the kingdom number three prophecies the spiritual compass that guides your life here and now and even in the future. Connecting the past, the present, and the future. Everybody say promises. Say principles. Say prophecies. Mm. Promises, principles, prophecies. This is what you find in the word of God. The Lord showed me a scripture that I saw in the new light. Maybe I should just touch it very quickly. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 5. Genesis 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, And God called the light day. What did God call the light? <laughs> and it says, The darkness he called night. So God had to give light a name day and darkness he called night and then the bible lists for us the many activities that are associated with night and day one of it is weeping it says the moment there is night it is related to weeping is that true that means if you want to turn your night to day in god's economy you don't wait for time you bring sufficient light that can turn that night to day in God's economy, it's not the movement of time that brings night or day. Whenever light, sufficient illumination that can swallow darkness comes, even if it is by 12 midnight, he calls it day. It says, though weeping endures for a night, that joy comes with the morning. So you can choose when your day starts, and if you are like Joshua, thank God his name is Joshua. You can ask the sun, stand still. I am tired of night. That means I, I seize this regulating day and night and day and night. Crying and laughing, crying and laughing. The, my son can stand still. So that whether it is a geographic day or night in my realm, it can be day. Was it not demonstrated in Goshen, even in Egypt, that when darkness was swallowing them, have you mastered the art of keeping your day stable? 
the light he called day and the darkness he called night hallelujah the moment your light comes it has become day for you the moment your light comes there are many people whose light came in the night while they were studying geographically speaking in the night but light came and for them that was the end of night so whether it is physical day or night in your realm it remains day perpetually he said he made two great lights one to rule in the day and one to rule in the night have you gone to the stadium in the night and sometimes when they are playing a match or a crusade if they if they blindfold you and you come there you will not even know whether it's day or night because of the high level of illumination you have to look at the sky to know that oh it's night hallelujah someone shout light, light. now please sit down there are two reasons according to scripture why jesus cried in the bible the Bible records that Jesus wept. John eleven thirty five. 35. That's the first reason why he cried. He cried because he was at Lazarus' grave. And the Bible says when he cried, they said, oh, how he loved him. So he was moved with compassion and he cried. Second reason why he cried, I believe that should be Luke 19 from verse 41 and 42. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 the bible says he came near and beheld that city jerusalem now and wept over it why did he cry 42 saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto thy peace he says but they are hid from your eyes not from your hands from your eyes because your hands will only hold what your eyes have seen it doesn't have to be hidden from your hands. It can be close to your hands and yet hidden from your eyes. Are we, are we learning now? The Bible says in Sodom and Gomorrah, when the angels came to rescue Lot, when he got there, he met a level of moral decadence in Sodom and Gomorrah. And when the angels went in to Lot's room, the people in that land came and said, where are these angels that we may know them? Are you in your, is that in your Bible? And then Lord said, no, 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 don't do this kind of abomination against the Lord. I will even give you my daughters. And they said, no, is these angels that we want? And the Bible says the angels drew Lord inside and struck the people with blindness. And the Bible leaves a very interesting statement. He said they wearied themselves at the door. They were right there at the door. And because they were blind, their hands were okay. The art of just bending the knob to open it, they wearied themselves. There are many people who are standing in front of the door, but simply because their eyes are closed, they wearied themselves at the door. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. The miracle of open eyes is a real miracle. Every time Jesus saw blind people, he did not leave them in that condition. It was a message. Many believers, I submit to you, are very blind spiritually and are not interested in learning the ways of God but they are interested in the results that follow his ways you see the way it works is you have to know the ways of god to experience his glory if you cannot experience if you don't know his ways you cannot know his glory exodus 33 the first request that moses made was in verse 15 it says lord show me your way show me your way show me your way did i get that right exodus uh show me your way and then you back up to verse 18 that will be exodus what now and he says show me your glory so it was his way first and then his glory show me your way and then show me your glory thank you verse 13 now it says show me thy way is that true 
So he first asked of his way. Now go to verse 18. Five verses later. And he now pleaded and said, show me your glory. So if you do not know his ways, you cannot know his glory. Many believers desire the glory of God, but they do not want to learn the ways of God. I wrote down here, in this kingdom, dominion in any area is based on sufficient knowledge, not just knowledge. Let's read it together if you can see it projected. Can we read together? One to read. If any man think that he knoweth anything, he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. I will always give this example. Please look at me everybody. For a student in school who scores 10% over 100, a student who scores 20%, a student who scores 30%, and a student who scores 35%, who was the highest? Who passed in a great system of A to F? Are you seeing that now? If you are to give an award based on who was the highest, the one who got 35 will come to receive the award as the highest. But if you are to qualify them based on who scored F or D or E or C, all of them failed. That means the one who scored zero, the one who didn't write the exam, and the one who passed more will all stand in the same category. It is dangerous to know little. Because you will receive the same recompense with the person who is not even serious. This is the challenge with many believers. Something small about finances. Something small about prayer. Something small about the Holy Ghost. Something small about speed. Something small about victory. And you find out that our results become the same. As the person who is absolutely not interested in the things of God. And we say, Lord, this is unfair. But at least I go to church. Do not forget my, anal my analogy. 35 over 100. Based on the great system is this. Hmm. Could that be why many, many believers don't seem to rise? To the point where people can look at you and say, at least me, I'm sure I'm not serious with God. But you who looks like you are serious, why are our results the same? In the name of Jesus, the kind of light that fires from heaven through his word to you, it will produce a clear difference between you and anyone who is not serious with God. Please sit down. Sufficient knowledge sufficient not enough the person who gets a may not get 100 but he did not fail too far to be mocked are we together everybody say light let me challenge you therefore in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god this is not the season for empty noise this is the season to go back and camp with the truth some of you, after this conference, go and get pastor's materials. Don't say, I was there when he taught it. Has the result justified your being there that day? Camp with it. Lord, this finance thing, I am tired. You are lifting my prophet. You are honoring him, giving him a voice. I can't be here sitting saying amen every Sunday. And this thing is not changing. And you go and camp with it. The Bible says, through desire, Proverbs 18.1, a man having separated him. You see, most, you don't hear these kinds of testimonies again, where people will tell you, I took a three days retreat in prayer and fasting, locking myself with the word. Father, let light come from heaven. There has to be a way. Why is this thing not moving? Can I tell you, the only person who receives an answer is the one who can ask a question. An answer is a harvest. The seed is a question. If you are too proud to ask and to inquire, you are also too proud to receive. Father, why is this not working? That to take care of two children 
I'm a Christian, I love God, and it looks like I'm dying. Whereas there is someone who, as at the time I came to Abuja, I was the one helping this person. It's not unhealthy comparison, but I'm provoking myself unto godliness. There has to be a way. The Bible says in Jeremiah, has God helped somebody tonight? It says, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the good part. Wherein is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk. There are many, many people who are absolutely bankrupt of results and only remain as commentators in life. I have never seen, I may be wrong, but I've never seen five wings. They are the ones who lift the profit. And when they are converting it to cash, I'm not aware that they call anybody anywhere and say, because you were in the stadium, come and share. Stop being a fan and challenge yourself as this fan mentality that i am just around good things but i never partake of it i i'm always i was there when he testified i was there when they prophesied i was there i saw the person fall down i saw the person cry i was there 10 years ago i still remember a fan mentality you must challenge yourself lord if it will happen i will be part of it in the name of Jesus Christ, someone shout light. Please, in one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and declare, open up, open up for light. I speak to my destiny. Uh, I've encompassed this mountain long enough. Open up. Someone you are prophesying in the name of Jesus. I am a man of God, but I am tired of this level of ministry. Lord, stretch me to a higher level by the power of light. Bring exactitude to my results, exactitude and mastery to my spiritual experience. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. So the first non-negotiable requirement, if your life must be extraordinary and if you must host and manifest superior dimensions of the glory of God, is light access to knowledge you must know what is there this kingdom is knowledge dependent number two now pay attention to this one the second key is the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of God the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of God. It is one thing to know what God has said. And respectfully speaking, you can die there with sufficient knowledge that God said it. Knowing that God said it does not make it happen. You must know what conditions have been connected to that promise. I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that this is where many, many, many believers including church people have missed it we are full of the knowledge of what god has said but most people do not contend to move further to know the conditions that are connected deuteronomy chapter 28 please from verse 1 and 2 deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass, the Bible says, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To do what? To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if 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 knowing the blessings will not make them happen reciting them may not make them happen listen most believers know what god has said but they do not know what it takes
asks, the demands, the conditions connected to it. I know it is my destiny in Christ to rise, but what condition was connected to that? I know it is in my destiny to prosper, but what condition is connected to that? Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1, 19 and 20. It says, if ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20, but if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Apostle, there is good in that land, just like pastor was sharing. He has revealed to you, I was so blessed. In fact, I think we should look at that scripture again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, from verse 7 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Let your amen not just mean let it be so. Let your amen also mean I amen to obtain grace to find out what it takes. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Reading to verse 9. A land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates and of oil, and of honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. So there is such a realm as that. A land where thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron. And whose hills thou mayest dig as brass. The average believer will say amen. And leave this statement as a parable. And a painful, a painful memory verse in your life. But somebody will say, Lord, I have found what you have said. What is my own part? What do I need to do? Listen carefully. For some of you here, this is the reason why 2019 has become the same thing as 2020. Regardless of the prophecy. 2020, the same thing as 2021. And if you don't hear this, I pray not that 2022 becomes just like last year. The demands, the demands, what does it take? What does it take, oh God, to be the head and not the tail? What does it take, oh God, to become a voice? What does it take, oh God, to command the attention of heaven? What does it take to carry genuine spiritual power? What does it take to attract favor to my domain perpetually? Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. The knowledge of the conditions required. Listen, every time you find a promise in scripture, draw two lines. Write that promise on one side. Then begin the part two of your learning. What is the condition, O oh God? Don't just say, I am the head and not the tail. If it is your confession to build up, fine. But if you mean just by speaking it, it will automatically happen. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you may sit there waiting and waiting and waiting even forever. Everybody say conditions. Every time you read the Bible, you will find out, ladies and gentlemen, that scripture is full of people who triumph because they not only saw the possibilities, but they stayed until they also received the conditions. 
I'll give you an example. The Bible talks about Jericho, popular scripture. How that it was shot, nothing would go in, nothing would come out. How in the world would you defeat such a city that five chariots could stand on the fence? And Joshua had to wait to know what is our own part. Victory is certain. God has spoken. Victory is not in our efforts. Victory is in his voice. So because he has spoken, we know that victory is there. But now, walking in the reality of that victory, they had to wait until he came. And he said, here is the instruction that is connected. Your own part is go around once. They would have said, why do we need to go around once? Let's just go around six times in one day. Once. And on the sixth day, he said, don't mind what you see. Just keep moving. And at the seventh time, he said, shout. I thought he would say fight. He said, shout. Is it in your Bible? The Bible says as they shouted, that wall crumbled. It didn't fall. It sank. Because if the wall falls, it will still become another fence. It sank. When Peter saw Jesus walking on water, he wanted the same result. And Jesus said, the result is obtainable. If it be thou, bid me come. The instruction, come. Not swim. Come. Peter would have said, I'm a fisherman. I will swim when I come to you. <clears throat> come. Listen, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Go and write down every area you need to see the glory of God in your life. And then contend for grace. Contend for grace. I think it's Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Please give it to us. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear. There is always what you will do. This is the thing that the Lord commanded that you should do. Are we together? Condition number three. And we'll wrap it up for tonight. Are you ready for number three? The third key or requirement if you want to see notable, extraordinary manifestations of the grace of God, you want to command supernatural possibilities, is that you must be ready to take actions of obedience. Actions of obedience. Not actions. Actions of obedience. In one word, we call it faith. Faith in one word is action. Actions of obedience. Faith is more than believing. Faith is more than confessing. Faith is more than wishing. Faith is more than speaking positively. Until there is action in the direction of obedience, you are not walking by faith. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Mary again with the angel. When he came to Mary, Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. It says, blessed is she that believed. Is that in your Bible? It says, for there shall be a performance. Say performance. Of those things that were told her. Say told her. There is a difference between what was told, even though it's the Lord who said it and a performance of it. God said it to me. We don't doubt it. But it takes another dynamics to have its performance. Blessed is she that believed. The word believe there does not just mean merely agree with God. <clears throat> Blessed is she that puts herself in a position where she's willing to act even as directed by the Lord. Are we together now? Yes. For unto her there shall be a performance. Acts chapter 3 and verse 16. In defense of the miracle that had happened, Peter stood before the council and he said, and his name 
through faith in his name, had made this man strong. Whom ye see and know. It was not just the name. It was faith in the name. The name is powerful whether it works for you or not. It is powerful. But it is your faith in the name that draws that power to your direction. Listen, if you never receive a miracle from God ever in your lifetime, it does not change the potency of who he is. But in his name and in his person that will now channel your portion of that testimony to you. Everybody say faith. Say obedience. Very important. He preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed. Means two people can come to them, all shout hallelujah, and they will go back and return with two kinds of results. And the Bible is saying it is not the deficiency of the quality of what was preached. But that everything you hear must be mixed with faith to profit. That means everything you hear should profit. Wow. Whatever profits can also bring losses. Depending on what you mixed with or otherwise. The word they heard did not profit them. Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. actions of obedience and that for high level spiritual illumination to understand the promises of god and to understand the principles the modus operandi of the kingdom and then there are those who have paid the price to learn they are aware they are not in ignorance but they have not yet found the place of personal responsibility working in partnership with god to manifest supernatural possibilities i know people who are excellent teachers but they are far from proof producers. It is dangerous to know what should be, and yet your life cannot capture it. You will be more frustrated than the person who is in ignorance. Because for you, the problem is not ignorance. The problem is lack of completion. You have not completed that equation. The conditions. And then number three, obedience. You must obtain grace to obey. You must obtain grace to obey. I give you an instance. There are many greedy and stingy believers who are wondering why they are poor. Why should you wonder why you are poor? Hallelujah. It's like not taking your bath for one week and you are surprised that your body is smelling. Why should you be surprised? Are we together now? It's like not eating for three days and being surprised that you are hungry. Or it's like eating overfeeding and being surprised that you are too full. No. Some things naturally lead to certain consequences. And there are those, for instance, who give, but they are not diligent. They have not found out the other principles that are connected for lasting wealth. So they give, and by the integrity of God's word, Testimonies come, but it vanishes because they have not learned how to replenish. Being fruitful is a level until you know how to re. This already is a revelation for someone. You see, let me tell you this. Half truth can destroy, sometimes it can cause a greater catastrophe than even error or ignorance. Half truth. One of Satan's most effective weapon. Once he finds out you are so passionate about God, he can no longer bring error, so he will bring half truth. Truth that is not complete. Are we together? Obedience. Obedience to his divine instruction. Obedience to what he has said to do. The Bible says, let every man give as he has purposed in his heart. I'm using that as an example. Not grudgingly, nor of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. For instance, there are those who do not even see the first level of wealth and prosperity. You know why? You are earning 500,000 and 1 million. I, I, I don't mean to challenge you, but I have to tell you the truth. 
you come to church when it's offering time or giving time you check your wallet you bring out 500 you push it back you bring out 200 you push it back you bring out 100 naira the new one you push it back then you bring out the old one and just drop it quickly and immediately after service you are going straight to a restaurant you will burn 20,000 at a moment and God is watching he's watching because where your treasure is that is where your heart is also Listen, I know that people have abused these things, but I have to teach you the truth. Don't just say, why is the heaven open unusually over certain people? Find out what they are doing. Are we together? Yes. There are people who are praying and holding on to the horns of the altar, designing their future in the place of prayer and there are others wishing and hoping and then they look and say life is not fair why are things just happening for this man of god and doors opening do you know the times that are invested in prayer commanding your morning redesigning things by the power of the spirit is a risk to enter a day you did not command no god makes the day but you rearrange it by faith to line up with what he said that day should be. Don't assume that just because he made the day, it will be nice. Do you not read that while men slept, Satan will also come and plant something that was not planted by the original farmer. So he planted favor and peace and lifting and speed. But because you were asleep, Satan came quickly and planted other things. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. Principles of favor, for instance. You are wondering why you were, you were retrieved from work alongside your colleague. In two weeks, he's gotten another job. And within that two weeks, he was even richer and more comfortable because you have not learned the dynamics of living in the kingdom. For you, the only thing you believe that controls greatness is money. And this person has placed value on relationships. So when there is no job, the relationship can be his stream of income. Supplementing him before another comes. Please damage ignorance from your life. Fight it like you fight Satan. Obedience. Like I said earlier on, let me say it again as we seek to conclude. No amount of prayer... Please listen to me, beloved people of God. No amount of fasting, no amount of spiritual activity will ever replace or substitute obedience. You can't fast as a replacement for obedience. You can't pray as a replacement for actions of obedience, except if the prayer itself is the instruction desired. Are we together? Oh God, you have commanded that I give. You spoke to me that the seed that will bring me to the next level is this. But Lord, I'm not interested in sowing. But can I pray for five hours to replace that? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Good master, what must I do to be saved? Most people do not inquire of the Lord again. What is the action step that represents the bridge between this level and the next. I sat down when I heard pastor say that he came into this city with 20 naira. Even those who came with 1 million are still suffering. They can't tell where it went to. It's, it's risky to walk alone. What made a man who came into a city with 20 naira? Now look what God is doing in and through his life. He's lucky, you will say. The commentator's ignorance. Until you find out the forces that were engaged with understanding. The times of prayer. Listen, when you listen to the stories of people, don't find what to laugh about. Find the, act, the points of action, the points of obedience. What connected pain to glory? How did God turn your mourning to dancing, your sorrow to joy? What happened, Jabez? I know your mother cursed you. You came as a result of, she, she cursed you because of sorrow. How did you become more honorable than your brethren? 
Jabez will tell you one day, number one, I got dissatisfied. I knew that there had to be more, that nobody is a biological mistake. And then I prayed and I said, oh God, that thou wouldest bless me. There are certain people, for instance, the reason why witchcraft continues to reign in your family is because you've not made prayer investment that makes the realm of the spirit know you are serious. You are still waiting and, and, and allowing darkness to reign. No matter how mad a man is, he never enters fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he can push your door by mistake. But when he sees fire, he has enough sense to know that this is fire and it hurts. Even in his madness, there is that space for sanity. He makes his ministers wings. His angels wings and his ministers flames of fire. There is a way you can get up and say, I make it as a project. I will take advantage of all the weapons of victory, the blood, the name, the word, and once and for all, put an end to this pattern of tragedy. You can start every night, one hour, 12 on the dot. Shakatos katia. Mambra katos ketebela katosia. The realm of the spirit will think you are playing. One month, you are still at it. You are like that woman in Luke 18. Avenge me, my adversary. The one who destroyed my great-grandfather. The one who took away the blessings of the land. The Bible says that George did not fear God nor regard man, but that defenseless widow, knowing how to come to him repeatedly because of her importunity, here was his testimony that though I do not fear God or regard man, this woman will weary me by her continuous coming. Lord, I have come again. It is me again, your son and your daughter. Ministry must work in Abuja. Lord, I'm tired of jealousy and envy. Believing that other people were just lucky. I take responsibility and declare that the narrative over this work you have given me must change. Every land, like my pastor told me, is a good land. The riches of this land, you must find me. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are very difficult places to go in this city, but not when you order a product and pay for it. When you order a product and pay for it, even if you are in the cave, the delivery man will find you because there was an instruction. They will find you until it gets to you. What order did you place in the realm of the spirit? And why are you complaining that nothing has come? It is not where you are. In the name of Jesus, I call for destiny helpers. In the name of Jesus, I declare that the riches of the earth and you are praying with understanding. Let me tell you the truth. There are many people who are givers, but they only obey God. They have not come to you because no instruction has been given to them about you. But it is within their power to release without restraint. Your assignment is to negotiate in the realm of the spirit with the father of spirits. And let him do the speaking to them. And they will come rushing like pastor said. I hope you are learning something tonight. You want to live an undeniable life, a life of evidence. Take away ignorance. Stop clapping that you have 35 simply because you are in the presence of people who have 30 and 20. All of you is still, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not insulting you, but I'm just speaking apostolically. 35 is still F. 39 is still F. 40 is E. E is barely passed. You won't go forward. There are those who have a B and in their world, B is F. They are still pressing. They have a B.O. And there are those who have an A. But the A, they are not satisfied with 75. What, what of the remaining 25? You will see them at score 80 in the realm of the spirit. And they are still moving with the hunger of a student who has F. And we, 
will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less because we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less we know listen i will tell you this one of the things i love about reverend godwin honestly and i'm not saying it because i'm on his stage is his hunger and his passion for things i have seen his response to the word of god and i stand by the god of heaven to tell you if you are connected to this vision and you've not drawn out of that spirit of hunger you are missing a lot i have seen his passion i made up my mind i am a, as a principle i don't flatter myself i don't over pamper myself if god has done something father thank you you pat yourself at the back that's all right next walk on ground what don't i know because there are still virgin lands don't allow people clap you into mediocrity and you remain there doing small things and celebrating yourself just because you are surrounded by people who are not seen far stretch and challenge yourself there is more you prayed for 30 people and only two god healed thank you father because i remain thankful but lord why didn't 28 what happened the Bible says handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies of the apostle. Is that realm not attainable again? Lord, I return back to the altar. And you pray like you have never handled the healing anointing. And God says, I see your hunger and I see your fire. Let's measure a thousand cubits for you again. You are ready to dive deeper. Listen, let me tell you this. For someone, I came here to cast out this arrival mentality from you arrival mentality small things small things small things respectfully speaking and i say this with every sense of honor if you're a man of god here let me challenge you by the spirit all of us together there there are there the journey is still very far please do not ever find yourself in any kind of flattery whatsoever thank god for that which we have seen but compared to the master's expectation, we are only one step out of the cave. We have to be honest and stay. Pray like never before. Fast like never before. Get not from a competitive standpoint. Lord, I am enlarging my spiritual capacity until you give me the keys of nations. Don't be too quick to clap for yourself and celebrate yourself and say, I am better than this businessman, better than this. They comparing themselves with themselves, he says, are not wise. Are we together? You're a music minister. Don't sing and keep listening to yourself from morning till night. Just enjoying what you are doing. Is that the best? Challenge yourself. There can be more. There can be more. This is what I tell myself all the time. There can be more. Those who really re arrive are those who never intend to arrive. Those who really arrive are those who never intend to arrive. They don't even know when they've crossed the finish line because they are still moving. You mean I'm done? No, no, this can't be it. Hallelujah. Oh, apostle, but I'm a billionaire. I just made my first two billion. How much have you given the kingdom without it affecting you? If you still can give something and lack sleep, you are not yet wealthy enough. Keep pressing. Until you can get up and God can give you a list of 20 ministries and you can bless them and still go back secured because you are not broke after giving. You've, you are not yet there. Don't say I have a house, I have some estates, I have a few cars. Thank God for that. We salute your diligence so far. But the king's business still requires more. Are we together? 
Oh, man of God, I preached a wonderful message. And you can imagine how many people liked me. How many other people need to hear, need to be changed? Hallelujah. For as long as there is one person close to you who has not experienced the reality and the fullness of the life of God, take it as a challenge and keep pressing. I have prayed for people. I have seen people healed. But sadly, I have seen others who are not healed. That becomes my assignment. Thank God for those who were healed. I have prophesied to people and I have watched it turn their lives around. But I have seen a few who are still in waiting. Why is that so? I take responsibility for it and begin to press. Listen, this is the attitude of a winner. Our time is gone but we are going to take five minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry to God. There has to be that holy anger in your spirit. Father, my life is not yet notable. Uh -uh. I, I confess that it is not yet, it is not yet beyond, it's not yet uh, um, undeniable. It, uh, it, 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 there's, there's still doubt as to whether you are the one helping me or not. There is still doubt whether I was genuinely called or not. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Please pray. Embra kata kato kate la kata bakatos kate balanda shana kata shabre ke parus ke zine ka parus yata shabrande ke barata kato zale kata someone is praying someone is praying someone is praying shakate bekate kata what a life it's a new season for you but contend in the place of prayer on common results on common dimensions. Lord, we step into virgin dimensions in the spirit of grace, of wisdom. Someone is praying. Pray for your ministry. Pray for your family. Pray over the mantle upon your life. Lord, this cannot be it. I stretch. I stretch. I stretch. I stretch. I stretch. I stretch. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are still praying. Please don't be distracted. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Philippians 3 and verse 13. Please give it to us. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. Yesterday's trophy, yesterday's result, Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you, but I know there is still more. It says, I reach forth to those things which are before is someone ready to pray you are a prophet have the nations had your voice we are still in confusion even though you are there don't say i have arrived go ahead and pray you are an apostle there are nations that are still in darkness you are a pastor you are a teacher there is still error around pray we all have not arrived we must pray greater grace oh god 
Sakatabatas and Breketekete Bakapos. Sabatata Bakatos and Breketekos Kabiata. Kingdom financier, there are greater levels, virgin dimensions. Businessman, there are greater levels, virgin dimensions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Job chapter 28. We are praying. Please don't be tired. Something is shifting in your life. From verse 7. Take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place, that's where I want to be. Will you take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place. Job 28 from verse 7. We are still praying. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye has not seen. Next verse. The lion's whelps, even though he's a warrior, it has not gotten there, nor the fierce lion passed there. Lord, where is that path where champions have not yet gotten to? That these birds, although they have an advantage of height, they've not been able to see that realm. The lion that does not fear any dimension, what heed that realm that he has not gotten there? That is your next prayer point. Lord, take me to that realm. Take me to that realm in ministry. Take me to that realm politically. That realm of wonder. That realm of grace. Someone is praying. That realm of grace. Please pray. In the name of Jesus, 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 we will rise in your name, Adonai. 
you reign on high. We will rise in your name. I don't know. You reign on high. Hallelujah. Please do not miss the other sessions. I just have one minute to speak over your life tonight. I'm, I'm seeing like 10, the number 10. And there are 10 people that God is calling you. Listen, God is telling you that many destinies are depending on you. Not just your family people, but many destinies. And the anointing of the Spirit is going to come upon you. Please, if I can have those people here just for one minute, we may not have all that time. Father, I am praying. I stretch my hands. Help them. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just, just do me a favor and help to bring them out. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare right now. I don't know where these people are, but Father, the mantle for their destiny. In the name of Jesus, please don't just come out. Uh, no, 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 no. You don't come out at random. The power of God himself will bring you, please. You don't come out at random. The power of God will bring you. Please bring them. As the power of God comes on them, please pick them and bring them. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my you hands right now. You don't come out at random. Walk them back. Walk them back. Please bring them out. Shalalamat sadabalagata baranda gadega sodobos. Skale brandege baroskia. It's a new season. Something is coming upon you. Shanina salabaranda zelakosia tali katos. Embra kato zatia la haskada baladosiata. Enkretike beretike te balakatoski atabatia. There are some of you right now. God is trusting you with graces, the new wine. God is saying the old wine is finished. Hear me? Help them, please. The old wine, bring them out. The old wine is finished. God is saying you need a new wine skin because there is a new wine that I want to pour upon you in ministry, in business. The old wine skin. Don't celebrate the glory of yesterday. Yesterday is gone. There is a new wine coming upon you. But you need a new wine skin. Ashalanza ni kapare katoshiata. Legate brende ke pakatos koto brende ke ta. Imbre tike pele katos kaside ke tea. The Lord is showing me one person. You are into the prophetic ministry. I'm seeing the hand of the Lord come upon you right now. The Lord is saying there is a dealing. Help that woman that he needs to begin to start with you because the nations are waiting the nations are waiting the nations are waiting i declare by the spirit please help her Sir, is this man a man of God? Are you a pastor? What do you do? Do you do politics? Very much. Politics. Very much. Very much in politics. Yes, sir. I'm a, I'm a politician. Yeah, he's a member. I want to pray for you. There is wisdom that God, no, 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 I'm not going to lay hands on you. There is wisdom that God is bringing upon you. It's one thing to help many, but God will have to use others to help you. I stretch my hands. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ that you have helped many god will use many to help you i stretch my hands upon you in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ there is a woman i'm seeing you in a vision you were backing a baby the hand of god is coming upon you you are a deliverer even over your family in the name of jesus christ who is the son of the living god i decree and declare i don't know where that person is 
but may that fire that comes from heaven please help this man I declare may that fire rest upon you now in the name of Jesus for you will never be the same you will never be the same we're about rounding up I'm hearing in my spirit restoration there are people who have lost particularly money you've lost whether in business you've lost money in some kind of venture listen let me tell you the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower the Bible says the righteous run it to it and they are saved can I prophesy over you in the name of Jesus everyone here anything that has left you that should not have gone I stand by the God of heaven and in partnership with the grace and the mantle upon God's servant here I declare in the name of Jesus receive restoration receive restoration yeah. under a certain condition everything that leaves you can return but until and unless that condition is put in place in the name of jesus i decree and declare again receive restoration yeah. receive restoration yeah. in the name of jesus christ please help someone who is going to shout loud at the back i just saw light i would always see this Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called. hallelujah one last person is there someone here in the judiciary the judiciary you are a I don't know whether you're a, a, a legal practitioner I just the Lord just showed me something about someone that has to do with a judiciary please help them mighty God I don't know where that person is but in the name of Jesus, I am praying for you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 You are in the judiciary, madam? Yes, sir. Do you believe God is able to lift? Yes, sir. You, you too, mama? Practitioner. Legal practitioner. Can I pray for you? Father, I stretch my hands over these precious people here at this assembly and also this man you are the one who is able to lift men i decree and declare by this mantle and this grace in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may my god lift you step into a new season now help that woman please in the name of jesus i decree madam there is such a grace that is coming on you this woman the first woman who came out I'm seeing you climb a ladder in the realm of the spirit and the Lord is saying he's lifting you. I declare this, I stretch my hands towards you. That fire that will make for your lifting, let it rest upon you. All of you who have come out as touching legal professions in the name of Jesus Christ, any embargo of witchcraft keeping you down, I curse it right now. I release you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead go and excel go and excel go and excel go and excel above and beyond divination above and beyond enchantment go and excel I extend that prayer to everyone here if there is anything that has held you down so that you are at the same position year in year out Help them, please. Aye, 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 I aye, call aye. on my God. Makatos katebakata. Embrace it. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Release them now. I declare a prophetic jubilee. A prophetic jubilee. Everything tying you down. Please help them. Everything holding you down. I declare a prophetic jubilee now. Here at this conference, undeniable release from curses, undeniable release from spells, from enchantments in the name of Jesus Christ.
Please help them at the back there, my God, so they don't enjoy themselves. Please pray in one minute. I declare my release. I declare my release. It's time to go forward. Someone is declaring. I release you, I release you in the name of Jesus. Every power that says you will not rise, that says you will not move forward, that says Abuja or your environment will be hostile, I come against it by the blood. In the name of Jesus. And for all those who are out here, I declare by the Spirit of God that everything that is related to yokes, please help them, my God. Everything that is not of God, for all those who have come, every yoke, every spell, every enchantment, right now at the count of three, it lets you go now and forever. One, two, three, go, 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 go 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 out of their lives in the name of jesus out of their destinies the bible says now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i prophesy liberty in jesus name i pray in jesus name i pray please listen to me if you are here in this place god bless you those in front those who can please let them just gently return back you are in this place please spare me a minute you came for this conference you are outside you are inside up the balcony or watching no matter where you are watching from and you are saying apostle as i heard you teach i'm realizing right now that i have heard the gospel many times but i've not taken that step of obedience to genuinely make Jesus Lord of my life. Or you might be saying, I, I remember coming across in genuine repentance, but as it is now, my life has gone haywire. I need rededication fast. We have just one minute for you. Whether you are up the balcony or down, please don't wait for anyone to be the first. You arrive here before them. I'm going to count one to three. I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus here as we appreciate them. One, are you coming? Let's honor them as they come. Run to Jesus. Swallow your pride. Run to Jesus. A new beginning, oh God. Don't enjoy anyone. Please take it easy. Take it easy. Run to Jesus. While you are standing here, don't look at me. Cry before the Lord. Show me mercy, oh God. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. You look past my sin, my guilt, my shame, and poured your love. You look beyond me, oh. You look beyond me, oh. Keep coming. I'm the one. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. Sing, I'm the one, say. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Listen. No, that's a demonic thing. Let him go now. Out! Now! In the name of Jesus. Please look at me, those of you in front. Thank you so much for making this bold decision. Look at me. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. This is not some jamboree in church. This is a genuine decision that will turn the course of your life around. That you will forget that here at Word Alive, you had an encounter with Jesus. Indeed, it will be undeniable. May I request in one minute that you lift your hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And for anyone who may be watching from across the globe by way of television or by way of the internet, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you. Here is your chance to make it right with Jesus. He said, ye must be born again. 
For if our hope is only in this world, the Bible declares that we are all most miserable. Please lift your right hand. I want you to say it this loud and clear. You are not reciting a poem. This is a confession of faith that will translate to the administration of the life of God in your spirit. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe with my heart that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Lord, as my Savior, and as my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I am a child of God. I am a recipient of eternal life. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these ones. In the name of Jesus, you have brought them by your spirit. And Lord, you have granted them the privilege of being partakers of your life through the new birth experience. I commend you to the word of God and to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness in the name of Jesus. As for you, you will only go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Any instructions for them? Okay. Please. Okay, all of you who are here, may I please request that you follow the counselors waving their hands. Let's honor them as they go. They'll have a word with you very quickly. Please keep clapping until they go. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, let me lend my voice with pastor and encourage you. I understand that if I'm right, there are two sessions or at least two sessions with me here. We're here tomorrow in the morning again. Am I right, sir? Yes, sir. Tomorrow in the morning and on then Sunday on Sunday morning again. Please, tomorrow, uh, the morning session, make sure that you do not come alone. You see what God is doing. For some of you, whilst you're watching, the Holy Spirit is telling you there is so, 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 and so who needs to be here for their life to be transformed. Do the work of an evangelist and bring them, even if inside is filled, I'm sure that there will be other provisions. And then please make it, even if it is a sacrifice you have to make for the Sunday service so that God can give you the balance of what he started. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. But as for tonight, the Lord bless you. 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 Tonight 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 the Lord bless you. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.